Okay, so you know how some directors are like, they're practically Hollywood, right? Like yeah. when you think about Hollywood, you think about them. Right. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, for sure. Like he is one of those legends. But Absolutely. But his new film, Juror, hashtag two, is doing some things. Yeah. That are a little different. Yeah. And they're raising eyebrows, for sure. Yeah, it's pretty unusual. Especially for someone with his track record. Yeah. It's getting this super limited release. Yeah. Like only in 50 theaters. Wow. And that's across just a handful of major cities. Yeah, that's tiny. That's practically unheard of. Right. For a director with his level of success. Yeah. And get this. Okay. Warner Brothers. Uh-huh. Might not even report the box office numbers. What? I know, right? Really? So that's why we're diving into this today. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. I know, it's kind of wild. We got to try and figure out what's going on. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what's so fascinating about this? I think what's really interesting yeah. is that this could signal like a change uh -huh. in how these big studios okay. value okay. a director with yeah. this kind of history. You know, yeah. like Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. We're talking about the guy who made Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. Million Dollar Baby. Oh. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Come on. I mean, these weren't just hits. Yeah. They were amazing movies. Yeah. Award winners. Critically acclaimed. So why? Right. Why this tiny little release yeah. for Jur Hashtag 2 it doesn't make sense. That's what I want to know. Right. I'm so curious about that. Yeah. Especially because Jur Hashtag 2, it's a courtroom drama. Yeah. But it was supposed to go straight to streaming. Oh, really? And then to go from that yeah. to a limited theatrical release in yeah. like just a few cities. Yeah, like where is it playing? New York. Okay. L.A. Sure. Chicago. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that is a pretty strange move. It is. Really strange. It is. It almost feels like what they call a platform release. Yeah. It's where they try to build some buzz. Right, yeah. Before they do a wider release. Yeah, you're right. But even then. But even then. You'd think. Yeah. More than a handful of cities. Exactly. For Clint Eastwood. For a name like that. Right. So what does that say about their confidence in this film. Yeah. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. they might not even report those box office numbers. Oh no, it's so strange. It seems like they're shooting themselves in the foot. Right. Like why wouldn't they report them? You'd think. It's more well, they'd want to. For a movie with Clint Eastwood. Exactly. I mean, he's a legend. Well, so maybe they're trying to like okay. manage expectations. Okay. So they don't have to compare it okay. to his other big, big hits. I see, I see. And maybe by not reporting the numbers, okay. they can control how people talk about the film. Oh, I see. Especially if it doesn't do as well yeah. as a typical wide release. Yeah, that's a point. You know, that's that. a good point. But here's the thing. Yeah. There are all these rumors going around yeah. that this might be Clint Eastwood's final film. Really? So if this is his swan song, okay. you know his last hurrah. Yeah. Why not a huge release? Exactly. Like a big celebration. Yeah, you'd think a big send-off. I know. Right. It feels like a quiet goodbye. Yeah. Like he's just fading into the sunset. It's very low-key. And so if this is yeah. his farewell to filmmaking, uh -huh. does this tell us something yeah. about Hollywood as a whole? Yeah, like maybe they just don't care okay. about theatrical releases yeah. the way they used to. Yeah. Especially for movies like courtroom dramas right they probably think those do better yeah. on streaming anyway you're right you're right so okay let's think about this if this really is eastwood's last film yeah and they don't care about the box office okay what are they after yeah good question i mean are they trying to achieve something different maybe they want yeah. like critical acclaim okay so awards buzz yeah awards buzz okay something like that something that doesn't need right. a blockbuster release right Exactly. That's a good point. It's possible they're thinking yeah. this limited release builds prestige, uh, gets people talking, okay. maybe even some awards nominations. Okay, yeah. And then they can use that to promote it yeah. when it goes to streaming. I see. Like a two-part plan. Okay, so like a smaller release now yeah. to hype it up exactly. for a bigger audience exactly. later. Exactly. So if you're a huge Clint Eastwood fan, yeah. you're probably like, how do I even see this movie? Right. Would you travel to one of these cities just to see it? Yeah. Tough choice. Or would you just wait and hope it comes to streaming? Right. I mean, it really makes you think Yeah. about what's going on in Hollywood. Yeah, it does. Is this a smart move? Right. Are they adapting to how things are changing? Yeah. Or are they just not sure yeah. how to handle movies 
from these legendary directors right. in the age of streaming. Yeah, it's hard to say. All right, so let's recap. Okay. We've got Clint Eastwood. Yes. Juror, hashtag two. Uh-huh. This courtroom drama. Yeah. It's potentially his last film. Yeah. Limited release. Yeah. Super mysterious. Right. And they might not even report the box office numbers. It's wild. So what does it all mean? Well, I think the big question is, yeah. is this the future okay. for films from big directors? Yeah. Or is this just a weird uh, one-off situation? Yeah. You know, just for Eastwood okay. and this specific film. I guess that's for us to decide. I guess so. What do you think? What do you think the future holds for films like Juror Hashtag 2? Yeah, what do you think? Let us know.